Greetings, everyone. Good evening and welcome to our Power Podcast All-Star Livestream Series. I'm your co-host, Brother Bedford. And again, we want to thank you over and over again. For those of you who have been sticking with us throughout these few weeks, some of you have been regulars. Every time we're on, you're on with us. And so we thank you. Uh, we hope and pray that you are taking the necessary precautions to keep you and your family safe still during this time of quarantine and, and shelter in place. Uh, and again, we hope and pray that we're serving you by bringing you the best of Black America. I mean, the thought leaders, the entrepreneurs, the, insp the inspirational speakers, motivational speakers, we've been bringing them all to you and we hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed them. I know I have, I've been taking copious notes and one of the emails that I received from someone was saying that these were not just inspirational, they're, they're learning business advice. They're getting a business education by listening to all of these interviews and going back and drawing the nuggets out that's being taught. So we hope and pray that you're being served that way and that this is edifying you in the process. So we just have a couple of things that I need you to do before we get into the rest of this evening with Dr. George C. Frazier and Dr. Willie Jolly. This is gonna be a whole lot of fun and I can't wait for us to get going. So before we get started, I need you to go ahead and type in your name and tell us where you're from, Bo. If you could do that really quick, that would be very helpful to us. I need you to also go ahead and follow George Frazier's fan page. I need you to like it, I need you to love it, and I need you to follow George Frazier's fan page, and then you'll get all of the provocative things that George shares with us, all of the insights, plus you'll get all of the announcements of up, upcoming events that George is participating in, as well as all of the updates for the Power Networking Conference and things that we're doing. And you'll be notified for all of the upcoming live streams that we have. And here's another way that you can get those notifications. I need you to go to www.newblackpower.com, enter your name and email, and I'll make sure that you get those things. Now, one of the things that you do have to do once you go to newblackpower.com, you enter your name and email, you have to confirm that you want to receive these notifications. Because if you don't confirm, we can't send this information to you. We don't want to be spamming anyone. We want to make sure that everyone is uh, raising their hand to get this information and we're providing you this information. So I need you to confirm when you do that. The last thing that I need you to do before we get started, I need you to share this. I need you to hit that share button, put it in your Facebook groups, put it on your page, invite your family and friends and tell them that we're live and in living color with Dr. George C. Frazier and Dr. Willie Jolly. And so without further ado, I want to put you into the hands of our host for the evening, the father of the networking movement, the conversation for networking and building effective relationships in the Black community, none other than Dr. George C. Frazier. Thank you, Brother Bedford. This is going to be an exciting night. There are many motivational speakers, brothers and sisters, but there is the one, uh, the only the incomparable Dr. Willie Jolly. He is truly a Renaissance man, a Hall of Fame speaker, a multi-award winning singer, an international best-selling author, a noted consultant and thought leader, a popular national radio show host, and a dynamic TV personality. Dr. Willie Jolly has achieved remarkable heights in the speaking industry and having come from very humble beginnings of being a fired singer who was replaced by a karaoke machine. He has gone on to be named one of the outstanding five speakers of the year by the 175,000 member Toastmasters International. In 2005, he was inducted into the prestigious Speaker Hall of Fame and received the CPAE Award. That's the Council of Peers Award of Excellence, as well as achieving the distinction of Certified Speaker Professional. That's CSP by the National Speakers Association. In, in 2012, he was the recipient of the Ron Brown Distinguished uh, Leadership Award. And in 2013, he was named as one of the top five leadership speakers by speaking.com. 
And in April of 2018, he was named a legend of the speaking industry by the Veteran Speakers Association. Dr. Willie Jolly uses his public platform to pursue his mission of empowering and encouraging people to rise above their circumstances and to maximize their God-given potential. Many know him as the speaker Ford Motor Calls uh, in, 20, in 2006, I believe that was, uh, when they were on the brink of bankruptcy uh, and he worked for them in 2006 and 2007 and 2008 and 2009. And, 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 and they were able to reject a government bailout and go into a billion dollar program. He was there when they were filing for bankruptcy. So no matter the venue, for his exciting television appearances on Sirius XM radio show or to corporate appearances and audiences with all, Walmart, GM, Comcast, Verizon, Marriott, the Million Dollar Roundtable, Dr. Willie Jolly keeps it moving with high energy and enthusiasm as he delivers nuggets on how every person can live a better life and win more each and every day. Now I can go on and on, which would consume the hour that we have allocated for this brilliant mind. Um, so I'm just gonna trunk, this is sort of the abbreviated truncated version. So, but, but because I wanna get, I, I wanna give Willie as much time to speak his truth and to speak his power tonight. And I don't wanna, I, don't, I just don't want to take up the time with, with all of the, the glorious introduction. And this is, let me just say it, he is a well-decorated brother. Um, the topic tonight is going to be the real deal about generational wealth. But before we get into that topic, and we're going to break it down into two, to two parts, part one is hope and, and part two is what Willie likes to call the help section. But like I've done with all of our illustrious guests, all of our thought leaders like Willie Jolly, I just want to touch on the elephant in the room. And that, of course, is COVID-19. And the question I have for Willie, Willie, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your commitment to our people. Thank you so much for being Dr. Willie Jolly. We love you for that. Um, what are we learning from COVID-19? That's number one. And Willie, what are we missing if we're missing anything? What are we missing? But most importantly, from your perspective, from your vantage point, from your thought leadership, you're a, a critical thinker. What are we learning and what are we missing? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, George C. Frazier, Dr. George C. Frazier, for inviting me to be part of this illustrious, illustrious lineup. I'm, I'm honored and I am humbled that I would even get in the lineup. You got uh, Freddie Haynes and you got Michael B. Roberts, you got uh, so many of uh, my friends, Les Brown, Lisa Nichols, uh, Dennis Kimbrough. I'm honored to be in the midst. And I was trying to explain to someone about the impact that George C. Frazier has had on my life as a speaker. I've got to show you something, George. Okay. You might not even remember this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> This yeah, was that's when you had that, hey, Willie. That's when you had hair. That's when I had hair. <laughs> I was a newbie. This was 1991. Wow. And I was new to the game. And George Fraser wrote Willie Jolly. I was Willie Jolly. You heard him on Jingles for Pizza Hut, Cadillac. Now he's speaking, and he has exploded upon the speaking industry. This is a young man to watch. That's right. Man, I, wow. look, folks, I was a nobody. I was an unknown. I was a no name. And George C. Frazier was well known. And he took the time to not only encourage me when he came to DC, 
but to put me in his book and say, this is someone you should watch and you should, you should support. He endorsed me. And George C. Frazier's endorsement, folks, you don't know how powerful that is for somebody who, who has nothing but a, a dream and a desire. So George, first of all, that's first. Second, I got another little something to show you. <laughs> Where do you get this stuff? Where do you get this stuff? Oh my I got, God. Look, I got I'm this stuff. Your library there. Look, at that, man, I got the stuff. For, this is George C. Frazier. And uh, man, I, I listened to this audio. It was cassettes, cassettes, cassettes. cassettes. <laughs> you don't I, have it. No, hey, Willie, Willie, don't come out with any eight tracks now. Don't no, come out with any. <laughs> so, so I just want to first thank you, George. And uh, everybody knows that I start the same way. I have only just a minute only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but our eternities are wrapped up in it. First, I'm grateful for this minute, this moment to be with Brother Bedford and George e. Frazier and all the people who are watching wherever you may be around the world. I wanna encourage everybody to do me a favor and start a watch party right now on your Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, hit start a watch party and then share it, share it, share it with everybody. Tell them, call people, send it out by social media, send it out by, by the pigeon. Tell Lottie Dottie and everybody we on it. We want to give you some information today that will hopefully empower, inspire and encourage you and uplift you through these challenging times. So we're going to, George, I'm going to answer that question you asked about the lessons learned and what we should be doing as a people. A little later in our presentation, if you don't mind. Okay. I want to. I want to. I want to jump into a question. A second question you typically ask about possessions. What possessions and the value? What what I would value? Because I thought that was a great way to start this message. And uh, couldn't we go there, George? Yeah. Let, yeah. No. No. Really. That that's a profound question. And if you want, if you feel that you're ready to answer that, uh, please. Yeah. Yeah. The question George typically asks: What is the what what is the possession I value the most? And when I when he told me that was going to be one of the the questions, my immediately re response was something that I had bought. I value. I I tell you my first thought was my car. Okay, I got a car that I like. It's fast, it's slick, and it drives itself. Okay, <laughs> I like that. So I thought, man, that would probably be my answer. But then one of the things I've learned over the last few years, George, particularly since going back to school and getting my doctorate, is that I must not ever settle for surface success anymore. Mm -hmm. I must dig deeper. I remember when I was through my doctoral program and my first paper was due. Now, let me tell you, going back to school in your 50s is a challenge. So my first paper is due. The night before my paper is due, I sit down at my computer and I'll write out a nice paper. I said, this is good. I hand it to my professor. The next day I said, this is a good paper. He said, I can't wait to read it. I came in the next week for my class. He said, you write great books. That book, it only takes a minute to change your life. I love that book. Set back, set up for a comeback. Uh, all the faculty members talk about that book. Turn setbacks into greenbacks and great, incredible. Attitude of excellence. Woo, that's a great book. Uh, uh, all your books are, uh, are just one after another. They're awesome. Then he handed me my paper, George. It had a big fat F on it. And he said, the reason you got an F is because you shared with me what you know now. The mm -hmm. reason you're in school is to learn to dig deeper to go deeper, to think deeper. So you got to go to the library. You got to do research. You mm. got to understand the question before you can give the answer and be sure you unpack the question clar and clarity and conciseness. So the answer question, well, what is the possession I, pos the possession I value the most? Possession by its definition means to own or have a close relationship with, to own or have a close relationship with. Value is the quality of the importance or usefulness that you think of the possession 
and has and has in your eyes. When I, I went back and said, okay, let me now unpack it. I realized that if I went two weeks without my car, which I recently did because we weren't going anywhere. I didn't miss it that much. But then I said, what are the, are the things I value that if they weren't there, I would miss them greatly? Number one, my relationship with God is the thing I value most in life. Mm. Because God gave me something I prayed for. And I will always be eternally grateful. When I was broke, busted, after I got fired and replaced by that karaoke machine, I was broke, busted, disgusted. I, I didn't know anything to do in my life but sing. I had no other framework from which to build a life. All I knew was music. And so I didn't know what to do. And I prayed to God for a month, George, a month without ceasing. God, give me wisdom. I want Solomon type wisdom, please. That's all I want. Give me wisdom like Solomon. I don't, I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you for possession. I'm not asking you for cars. I just want wisdom. And George, soon thereafter, he gave me wisdom and started opening doors and showing me. And from that getting fired, he showed me this door to go into and how to pursue a, a, a working with the school system and talking to kids about staying away from drugs and how to start taking engagement from the teachers and then start taking engagement from the, the from their church when they invite me. And then Les Brown heard about this guy who was a speaker and singer and he offered me an opportunity to be on tour with him and Gladys Knight. And that allowed me to be seen by corporate audiences and media people. And then the, the, the radio folks started calling and the book folks started calling and I got a book deal. And the first book became a national bestseller. It only takes a minute to change your life. Then a second book, a setback set up for a comeback became a global bestseller. And God kept putting me in places and opening doors and telling me step here, don't step there. And so the number one possession that I could not live without George is godly wisdom. Knowing mm -hmm. what to do when you don't know what to do. <laughs> second thing is health, health. Yeah. You don't have your health, that's, a, that's something I value. And I, I spend money for my health, vitamins, natural, organic food, a, a healthcare membership, uh, a bicycle, uh, the getting ex exercise material. Cause I realized as the Dalai Lama said so wonderfully, he said far too people, many, many people, so they, give away all their health to make a lot of money. And then they have to spend all their money to restore their health. So second thing I value is, so first is my relationship with God and the wisdom he has given me. Second is my health. And third thing, George, I looked for years for a woman I could live with mm. until I found one I could not live without. My wife, I value my wife. I love that woman. I would crawl over broken glass to get to that woman. So I, I had to lay that out to say, you know, many, many people know we wrote a book, a marriage book, but we have 35 years of marriage and we're still like day one. So my relationship with God, wisdom. Two, health. And three is my relationship with my wife. Yeah. And how many years, I, Willie, how, how many years of your marriage are deep? 35 years in June, next month, 35 years. And she hasn't left me yet. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, so so that, that was my uh, answer to that. So the day, first, uh, you mentioned it, George, tonight we wanna talk about the real deal about generational wealth. But before we talk about the real deal about generational wealth, we do have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is COVID-19. And the fact that many yeah. of the people who are watching right now are struggling and we're all struggling let's put it the truth we all are struggling at different levels as my friend harvey austin in columbia uh, ohio sent me a note this week he said so people say we're in the same boat now because of covid 19. he said that's not true we're in the same storm but we ain't in the same boat some people in a boat where they're in a cabin cruiser some people in a boat where they're in a a, a big houseboat and some are on a raft holding on for dear life. I don't know where people are, 
But I know that we all have been impacted, all have been disrupted, all have been filled with anxiety because this is a this is something we've never seen. See, we saw 9-11, which was a terroristic attack. Then we saw the 2008 economic, but we've never seen it both at the same time. A terrorist we can't see, we can't identify and an economic downturn where things have shut down. This co whole country came to a screeching halt. Speaking business, I'm looking at my calendar up here. Speaking business, I had, my whole calendar was full of speeches all over the world. All of them are gone, all of them. So here are the things I wanna share with people that I've shared with others that I hope will encourage you wherever, whatever ship you on through this storm that it will encourage you. Here are the things I've told audiences. And the reason I'm dressed like this today because every day now I'm doing corporate events via Zoom. I'm speaking to corporate groups around the world. They're hiring me to speak to their people to encourage them. And here's some of the things I'm telling them. Number one, I'm gonna give you seven quick steps before we get into the real help section, the generational wealth. Number one, don't panic. Don't panic. You must stay calm in the midst of a crisis. Be able to think your way out of that problem. Because if you panic, you cannot think clearly. 1929, there was a stock market crash. People panicked. Some jumped off of bridges, not realizing the market would come back bigger and better than ever. Panic is taken from the Greek word to choke. And it chokes off the air to your brain. So you cannot make wise decisions. And if you don't know how to make a wise decision in a minute of decision making, you'll end up making a poor decision. Do not panic. Breathe. One of the things I do is when moments of, of anxiety and high stress, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. And every time I say it, I, deep, I breathe deeper. I'm blessed and highly favored. Until I start getting calm in my life, I say, okay. Now, what should I do? God, what, where's the wisdom? You get you. I prayed for wisdom. What do I do? Got it. And then I move in that direction. And he, he, let me tell you, when this thing hit, first thing I did was said to my wife, we got to play defense first. We need cash in here right now. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. And we got it because I had to stop and think and not panic. Number two, don't willingly participate nor commiserate. Don't willingly participate nor commiserate. That means if you're not part of the solution, you're automatically part of the problem. And the way you participate is doing this, not listening to what CDC, WHO, and the doctors tell us to do to keep from getting ill. We need to six feet apart. We need to wash our hands. We need to do some social distancing. One guy told me one day, he said, man, I don't wanna stay six feet apart. I don't wanna do this social distancing. I said, I talked to my phone. I said, fine. You got two choices, six feet apart or six feet under. You choose. Okay. <laughs> you choose. So I'm saying to people, don't, don't do the things. I don't care what, what states open up. You use godly wisdom where you should go. You use godly wisdom. Now, don't commiserate. That means don't buy into the, all the gloom and doom. Don't sit all day watching the television and all the bad news because it will impact your psyche. If I took a sponge, George, put it in a bucket of water, at some point, the sponge is unable to do what it was created to do, soak up water. It becomes overwhelmed, oversaturated. Same is true for people. We're, we're to be productive. But at some point, if you listen to nothing but bad news, you're going to get to a point where you're no good. You're down in the dumps. So 15 minutes, no more than a half hour of looking at the news is enough. And then move on. So don't mm. participate, no commiserate. Number three, this is a big one. Don't let your pride poison your prosperity. Don't let your pride poison your prosperity. We must not let our pride get in the way of us surviving. I, I, George, you might have heard the name of Duke Green. Duke yeah. Green was, was one of the first African-American, yeah. I'm sure you knew Duke Green, first African-American multimillionaire IT uh, CEO started IBS back in the 70s. Duke was a, a, a forerunner of, of Black Enterprise on the Fortune magazine front cover. Black Enterprise. Duke was from Washington, a, a, a amazing entrepreneur. Yeah, well, I stated, hey, Willie, I stayed at his home during the Congressional Black Caucus weekend. 
Yeah. Wow, you know, and you know that house was a house, wasn't oh, it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was a house. So right. Duke uh, was one of my mentors, and so Duke told me, shared with me, and I wrote it in my book, "Turn Setbacks into Greenbacks: His Story." How in 1970 he had built this company to one of the top. IT companies in the, in the country. He had hired the best from Howard University and Harvard University and from MIT and Hampton, uh, the best IT experts of the time. And then there was a recession in the 70s. People had to line up for gas and money got tight. Well, Duke said, I cannot keep this company going if I let my people go, if I lay them off. So what I'm gonna do is keep them. And he took his salary and paid all the employees. Well, after about six months of paying his salary, he needed to get some money to pay his bills. So what he did every day was he went to work at IBS as a CEO from eight o'clock in the morning to six o'clock in the evening. And then from eight o'clock at night to 3 a.m. every night, he would drive a trash truck. He said, I drove a trash truck to get me through college. I can do it again. He did that for a year till the economy opened up and he could go back to one job as CEO. As a result of him being able to keep all those people on the payroll and keep them employed, five years later, he was able to sell his company for over $600 million. Lesson, don't let your pride. One of the things I'm doing now, many times over the years, people say, "Can do you do any coaching? I say, I don't do really do coaching. I don't have time to do coaching. I'm on planes. Well, I'm doing coaching now. I'm doing personal coaching because I'm not gonna let my pride get in the way of my prosperity, okay? Okay, so that's a big one. Number four, don't stop thinking about the power and the possibilities of tomorrow. Now, while we're in this crisis, the great champions of life will always have setbacks, but they keep one eye on that setback and one eye on the big goal. Case in point, Tiger Woods at the Masters. He's at the tee box. He hits a shot. It goes errant, goes over in the woods or in a sand trap. Now, he could panic and start swinging and going crazy. No, no, no. But Tiger knows. First goal, get it out of here, back on the green. Second goal, win the tournament. Let's focus on one eye on the problem. Always one eye on your possibilities. I want you to, folks, we're going through a tough time, but I want you to stay focused that you should have some goals. If you don't have written, co co compelling goals, I want to thank my friend Shay Brown, who beginning of the year, I did my annual goal setting seminar. Shay Brown called me a couple of days before and said, I want to record it. I want to, I want to put it down because so many people over the years have said, Peggy, Peggy, our dear Peggy. We love Peggy, right, uh, George? That's right. And sisters Amen. for Peggy sisters. Mars. <laughs> Peggy Mars and the sisters from Sisters for Sisters Network Incorporated. <laughs> well, I met Peggy at one of my goal setting seminars. OK, and people would come to my goal setting seminar for Shay called and said, I want to record it. I want it to be not only recorded for prosperity, but make it live stream so people can get it in other places. And he did. And it exploded. I want to encourage people to go check it out at uh, willyjolly.com slash goals. And it's the best goal setting seminar I've ever done. I'll tell you a little more about that and how my thinking has changed since going back and getting my doctorate and doing this all over again. Now, 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 look, don't, so you got to set goals. I got to set goals. Keep one eye on the process, on your problem, one eye on the goal. Number five is be proactive. I had the honor some years ago to be on tour with Dr. Stephen Covey in Australia. And backstage, I said, Dr. Covey, of all those seven habits, what's the most powerful? He said, well, win, win is the most powerful. I said, okay, great. What's the next most powerful? He said, be proactive. I said, what does that mean? He said, here's what it means, Willie. Don't wait for your ship to come in. Swim out to it. Mm -hmm. Swim out to it. And, and, and I give you an example of that. My daughter is a cosmetologist. She has a salon in North Carolina. She does well. But right now, there are no people getting their hair done. But she can cook. She can really cook, cook. I mean, when I say cook, cook, she can throw down cook. So what she did, that two children, single mom, she decided, here's what I'm gonna do. She started, she bought, went to the store, bought a bunch of food. I mean, big, big quantities of food and put on Facebook, I'm cooking dinners for those who don't want to have to cook tonight. And she told the menu, 
said, if you're interested, hit me up on Facebook and then pay me via cash app on your phone and I will have my son deliver them to you. Wow. She sold out. And every day she's been selling out because she was willing to be proactive. Okay, folks, be proactive. Number six, be creative. Everybody got some genius. It's not if you are smart, it's how are you smart. Some people are smart with organization, organizing. Some people are smart in writing. Some people are smart in uh, teaching. Some people are smart in cooking. Some people are smart. There are lots of ways. It's not if you are smart, it's how are you smart. Where's your genius? Everybody got some. God gave some to everybody. The key is now use that creatively. I've been in the house for two months, George, two months, except to go to the grocery store and ride my bicycle. That's it. Two months. Now, I'm in the house and I say, okay, what can I do? I'm doing, here's what my creative skills study. Well, you know, we do Happy Married Monday with the Jollies on Facebook Live, me and Dee, every Monday night, blowing up. Then I do my Monday through Friday, I do my Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell show, uh, Wake Up and Win with Dr. Willie Jolly segment across America syndicated. And I do that from here. Then I do my XM show right from here. And I, I send it out every week to XM. And, and uh, we, we just had John Maxwell, TD Jakes, Gladys Knight. Uh, we just had, we've had the best and the brightest, including George C. Frazier. Uh, we had Lisa Nichols just recently. We had uh, Dennis Kimbrough recently. I got all my guys on, uh, Randall Pinkett, Michael V. Robbins. We, we've had the best and the brightest. Well, I do my XM show. Then we send out a newsletter every Thursday teaching people what we learned on the XM show. Then Saturday morning now, I started a new show called the Jolly Good News Report on Facebook Live on my Jolly Good News page. And here's what I do, George. I don't tell nobody nothing but good news. Good news. <laughs> so we're on TV to tell you how many people got infected with the coronavirus, how many people died. That's not going to be on my good news report. Every day, every Saturday morning, I start at 10 o'clock on Jolly Good News Facebook Live and say, here's the good news for today. Here's how many people recovered. Last week, it was a million. As of yesterday, it was 1.3 million people have recovered. I, I promote that. And then I tell a good story or some stories of people who've done it. Then last but not least, creatively. Les Brown was on recently. He mentioned a song I released, a music video called We'll Get Through This. Mm -hmm. It has exploded. I recorded it right here in my office with an iPhone and an iPad. The whole music video, I recorded it, sent the files out to a music producer, a video trailer producer. He produced the video. We put it out. It exploded. Les started calling everybody, putting it out every day. You gotta watch. We'll get this through this. I want to encourage people to go to my uh, YouTube channel and look for. You, we'll get through this. YouTube channel. We'll get through this. It will empower, inspire, encourage. So be creative. Number seven. Be prayerful. Be prayerful. We need prayer through this time. People are dying all around us, so we gotta pray. Now, let me tell you something, folks. I got a secret for you. I tricked you. That's actually number one. Mm -hmm. It's actually number one. You should pray first. But I specifically put it at number seven for a reason. Because far too many people of faith will pray and do nothing else. They'll do nothing else. A lady came up to me one day, said, Dr. Jolly, I, I, I hear your message on the radio in the morning. Or get up mornings with Erica Campbell. I, I like it. Uh, I look, Dr. Jolly, I need a job. I said, well, okay, what are you doing to get a job? She said, I prayed about it. I said, great, what else? She said, oh, that's all. That's it. Look, folks, my Bible tells me faith without works is dead. If you want it, you got to pray. And as grandma told me after I finished praying, get up and move my feet. So the Chinese have a proverb that says, he who waits for Roasted barbecue duck to fly into his mouth is going to wait a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to move. We got to pray and then move our feet. So those are the things I want to encourage people to do to get through these tough times. If you use those principles, those principles are right out of my book. This is the seven principles out of my book turned setbacks into greenbacks. And these, this book 
contains stories from Michael V. Roberts and his brother, Stephen. Uh, one story after another, George Frazier, Duke Green, one great person after another who was on my XM show, who went from nothing to something, who went from broke, busted, disgusted, to millionaires, billionaires, Bob Johnson, Sheila Johnson, one after another who have built million dollar businesses and how they did it, seven principles. All right, now let's talk about- The help section, let's go to the help section. Let's go to the help. And have some real, have some real talk about the lessons we've got to discuss in and about our community, what we need to be doing. You've already touched on coronavirus. Um, some financial lessons. Let's just okay, talk about now the financial. We're going to do financial lessons, but before that, I'm going to go back to your questions that you asked at the beginning. The lessons we learned, we should learn, or what were the specific le- no. questions, George, again? Well, yeah, the, it, it was just two questions. Um, what, are we, what are we learning or have learned, or what is missing? What are we missing? Are we missing something? Is there an elephant in the room aside from the virus that we are missing? But most importantly, yes. what are we learning? George, I think I'll answer both questions with one answer. We were woefully unprepared for the coronavirus crisis. We, as a community, are woefully and have been woefully and are still woefully unprepared for this virus. We're all unprepared two ways, George. First, we were unprepared economically. We were unprepared economically Mm -hmm. to have money put away for a rainy day to sustain us. Second, we were unprepared health-wise, okay? We were unprepared that the underlying health conditions are wiping, we, they, this, this is like, we were lined up of shooting fish in a barrel because of our underlying health concern issues. And that, that is often, not always, but often cultural. How we eat, the lack of exercise, how we think about exercise. I'm, I, I'm an exercise freak. I work out every given, God-given day I work out. Now, not because I think I'm, I gotta do it. Let me tell you why. You know why, George. I'll remind you. Cause my brother died at 48. You were there at the funeral. Mm-hmm. You came in, you flew in for, I'll never forget you for that. Right. He died at 48 from a heart attack. 25 days after my mother. He was so overwhelmed by the loss of my mother that he died of a heart attack. Because mm. when I would be out running, he would ride up next to me in the car and say, what you running from? Is a dog chasing you? And he laughed as he was on his way to get a nice greasy sandwich. He liked good greasy food. <laughs> okay, but I learned a lesson when he died. I vowed to my children and his children, his five children, I'm gonna do all I can to stay around as long as I can so I can take care of you. And then I'm gonna teach you everything I know about generational wealth. And then I want you to pass it on to your children and your grandchildren. So my brother died prematurely and I made a vow that I would do all I could to stay around. So I made a commitment to exercise and I do it every day. So we got third thing though, George, here's the third thing that we woefully unprepared. And this is, this is hard, but Lisa Nichols said something and a couple other, other guests said something. Until we are absolutely honest with ourselves, we will never progress. The absolute honest answer is that too many people in our community have devalued education and have not taken full advantage of the education opportunities. We might have not the best schools, but we we should max out whatever we got. And if we don't have education, and we don't have the, the, ed, the education component, what happens we end up on the front lines? We end up on the front lines. That's right. How many Asian people do we see on the front lines, George? <laughs> Not many. Not many, because right. their parents made them excel at, in education. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough and I were talking about it yesterday, how so many people, when, when, when we talk about going to get an education, reading a book, don't take the time that we've taken, you've taken. Look at your library. Look at my library. Look mm-hmm. at Les Brown's library. We've mm-hmm. got to invest in our education so that we get from the front lines that we can not be like sitting mm-hmm. 
Because let mm. me tell you something, folks. Another crisis is on the way. I don't know when it's coming, but history has taught us every decade there's a crisis. 9-11, then within a decade, the, the economic downturn. 11 years later, coronavirus. You live long enough, you're going to see another crisis. So we got to prepare now for the next one and learn the lessons now. So what are they? One, we got to get financially our houses in order. And this is, oh, hey, let me tell you something. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to moi, moi. I, I, I got, I was woefully unprepared for this coronavirus crisis economically. Whoa, I, I'm slapping myself, beating myself, woefully unprepared. Let me tell you, I've made a lot of money in the speaking business, a lot of money. And I'm a risk taker. So my, my personal personality is shoot the wide, baby, okay? And so, I made all this money and I, at one point I had that money doing what our financial planner had told us. Put enough money away for a year that's cash, that's liquid, in case you have a rainy day. I had it away, it was there. But then the market started bubbling. The market started bubbling. George, the market started bubbling. Oh man, stocks were taking off. Man, I was looking at my stocks every day. I said, that money's making one, 2%. Oh man, I got, I got to get in the game. I got to put this money in the market. And I did. And of course, markets did. This market did what markets do. They go up and they come down. Okay. That's what markets do. So a couple of things I want to recommend people do. One, if you did not listen to the session with J.R. Fenwick, that George did the interview, listen to it. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. And two, if you got money, once you put your money, you start saving your money, put it in an account at Marcus Bus, Goldman Sachs. I get nothing, I got no deal with them, but they give a better percentage rate and JR might have another option, but I know they give a better interest rate than your bank. And so now, now let me, let me close the story though, George. I told you I was woefully unprepared for this economic downturn. But thanks be to God, I married a brilliant woman. So when I was making all that money, mm -hmm. my wife was, she cuts all the checks. She's, she's a CMO, CFO. She was putting some away of every dollar. So when I was, was saying, what are we gonna do now? I gotta come up with an idea. She said, don't worry, we are in good shape. I put some money away for a rainy day. See why it's good, gentlemen, and then folks who are listening, marry a smart woman. My mama told me, marry a smart woman. Say, because, you know, if you marry a dumb woman, you're going to have a life of misery. But I married a smart woman. <laughs> All right, a couple things I want to I want to say here. Lesson, George. In the Bible, there's a story about Joseph. Joseph was put in a pit by his brothers. He went to the prison because he got uh, arrested for something he didn't do. But he always pursued excellence. Wherever he went, he got a reputation for excellence and he rose to the top. Always do what you do with a spirit of excellence, a spirit of excellence. My book, An Attitude of Excellence, talks about the things I've learned over the years about excellence, but excellence. Next thing, Joseph went then from the prison to the palace because Pharaoh needed his expertise and excellence. And, and Joseph rose to number two. And they were rolling, things were good. But Joseph told the Pharaoh, we need to put away 5% of everything every day because a famine's coming. Every decade a famine comes. And he convinced the Pharaoh to put aside 5% everything that came in. And when the famine came, not only did it save Egypt and the people in Egypt, but the surrounding country, including Joseph's family. Folks, George and I give you a formula, and I want you to listen to this formula carefully. Of every dollar you get, here's what I want to encourage you to do. Tithe the first dime. Give, just give it. Because as you give, so shall it be given unto you. Number two, tithe, save the second dime. Save the second dime. And number three, 
invest the third dime. If you learn to live on 70% of your income, you will be able to grow wealth, which we're about to talk about. Let's talk about wealth. Here's what we're gonna talk about. Wealth, what is wealth? Four M's about money, George, four M's. Money, the four M's are make it. Next M is manage it. Third M is you gotta multiply it. And the fourth M, you gotta maximize it. That's what you gotta do with your money. Make it, manage it, multiply it, and maximize it. So what is wealth? If you ask 15 people, George, what is wealth? You're gonna get 15 different answers. Mm -hmm. Some people are gonna say wealth is an abundance of money. I got a lot of money. I'm wealthy. They are well-to-do. They wealthy. Uh, they, they had a good year. They're wealthy. So that's some of money. Some is say, I'm healthy. So I'm wealthy. I ain't got no money, but I'm wealthy. Some will say I'm wealthy because I got a great family. And some will say I'm wealthy because I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm very content. Now, I don't say any of those are not true, but there are four ty five types of wealth. And I wanna make sure everybody gets these five types of wealth. And tonight we're gonna to focus on one. There's economic wealth, financial wealth. Then there's health wealth. If you're not healthy, all the money in the world is, is not gonna make you happy. Then there's relationship wealth. What kind of relationships you have. George, you're the king of that. You're the mm -hmm. king of that. You're the king. Everybody loves George Frazier. Everybody. Then there's reputational wealth. Mm. What kind of reputation do you have in the marketplace? Your brand. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it paves a path before you. That's why I always talk about excellence. Because I want to pave a path in front of me. And then there's intellectual capital wealth. What do you know? Because what you know can make you wealthy in many ways. Now, those are the five. Now, I'm only going to focus on this one, financial wealth. Now, here's, we get different, different definitions, but I interviewed a bunch of people over the last two weeks to prepare for this. I interviewed millionaires, billionaires. And here's the, this, the, here's the common, consistent uh, a definition I got. Wealth is having enough assets that generate, no, wealth is having assets, assets that generate enough income so you can do what you want. Being able to spend your days the way that you choose. Mm -hmm. Being able to live the kind of life that makes you happy. Some call that financial freedom, but it is Assets. Now, why do I do that? Why do I do that? I'm going to talk about it. Also, wealth is having enough assets that can generate ongoing income after you are dead. Come on, somebody. Having Great. enough assets after you are dead that can sustain your legacy. Mm. I was on an interview and a guy asked me, Willie Jolly, what's your biggest goal? And my, I, I was quick to answer. My biggest goal is that 100 years from now, some child will walk in a room and see a picture of me and my wife, run up to it and say, thank you, great, 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 great granddaddy and great, 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 great grandmama for what you did back in 2020, 2021, 2022 to make it possible for us to have a business, for us to have a home, for us to go to school. Thank you, because it wouldn't be that way without you setting up the legacy. Let me tell you, we as a people, we've got to work on our legacy. Right. George, George, I just had a conversation with the CEO of the Dale Carnegie Institute. One of my clients at, at Cox Media Group said, I can hook you up with him. I said, I'd like to have a conversation. I'd like to get him on my XM show. We talked for a half hour. I'm going to get him on my show soon. But here's what blew my mind, George. We all know Dale Carnegie, the Dale Carnegie classes, the Dale Carnegie courses. This is my guy told me, he said, uh, 
we've got 36,000 franchises around the world, 110 countries, 36,000. They all pay us a franchise fee and a portion of their income. I said, wow, that's awesome. I said, great. I said, let me ask you a question. I took out my pen. What are you, what's your trade? What are your trading symbol? What do y'all trade as? He said, we're not public. We're private. I said, who owns it? He said, the family. The family owns the company. Right. I, I said, how, how old is the company? He said, 110 years old. So for the last 110 years, Dale Carnegie's legacy has been creating, getting income from something he created 110 years ago, and it's just churning out money and churning out money. That's my goal. Okay, that said, here we go. Dennis Kimbrough in his book. Okay, now let's talk about wealth versus riches. Because see, Far too often, we confuse rich with wealth. We confuse rich with being wealthy. The simple difference between rich and wealthy is that a wealthy person has sustained wealth, Dale Carnegie. In other words, a wealthy person will always be creating wealth because it's sustained. A rich person will only be rich for the amount of time that the money is available. When the money is gone, the rich is gone. I wanna encourage everybody to read this book, The Wealth Choice by Dennis Kimbrough. This is one of the most powerful books I have ever read because it's research-based. He interviewed uh, over a hundred black millionaires and, the, and his research, you'll see what statistical analysis is. He said, here's the thing out of this book that I love. Dennis said it so easily, wonderfully. It says, how do you keep score? The poor keep score by clothes and cars. The middle class keeps score by degrees and titles. Now he has, but the rich keep score by their bank accounts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate that a little bit. The the, the rich, the wealthy, he said, keep score by, but the rich keep score by their bank accounts and the wealthy keep score by their net worth and their balance sheet. Yeah. Here's what I, here's my new book, George, coming out. Dennis's piece planted the seed in my brain that fermented and generated and blossomed into my new book. The new book is called The Real Deal about generational wealth. I'm finishing yeah. it now. Here well, I want you to unpack that for a little bit. Right. We're, we're, we we're down to about seven minutes. That's right. So I get it I in. We went fast. Right. I got it for you. Five levels of thinking. You remember I'm a radio guy, so I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> five <laughs> levels of thinking, thinking, George. <laughs> so five levels of thinking that we see in America. First level of thinking is the indigent. The indigent think day to day. They got a sign with a, a cardboard sign with a, 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 a note saying, can you give me enough money to eat today? The, the second level of thinking is the poor. The poor think month to month. Did I get my welfare check? Did I get my SNAP payment? And every month they're going through the same cycle. The, the middle class think year to year. Did I get a cost of living raise this year? Did I make more money this year than I made last year? Mm -hmm. The rich think decade to decade. Typically, we'll see rich in athletes, entertainers. Athlete signs a 10-year $100 million baseball contract, he's rich. And I applaud every time one of them signs it. Bravo. The key though is what do you do with that money? Do you have a table party every night at a club where you spend two, $3,000 like 
like uh, um, John Hope Bryant said, he, he mm -hmm. said, I did it once. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I went there once and saw, or, or, or others have said, we can't be doing it. Now, here's the last level of thinking, the wealthy. They think generation to generation to generation. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children's children. Folks, if we're gonna be wealthy, we've got to generate businesses that generate asset income or we will be rich. And when we stop doing what we do, I read, a, I got a little piece here that says, if you have the greatest, highest paying job in the world, the question is, can you leave it to your son or daughter when you die? Probably not. But if you own the business and it generates huge incomes, you can. So the bottom line for generational wealth is understanding the difference between rich and wealthy. Rich is what you do. Wealthy is what you own. And I, I tell you, I've met some wealthy people. Nito Cobain, wealthy man. Wealthiest man I know. Owns a bread company. Owns a bank. Owns uh, a, a printing company. Harvey McKay, good friend. Owns an envelope company. His children now run it. Uh, Craig, Craig and Diane Welburn, you probably know them, uh, George. The yeah, biggest yeah. African-American McDonald's owners. I stayed with them in Martha's Vineyard this summer. F they got 50 McDonald's restaurants in their family. They got, they got 12 and the children have the rest of them. And they got two generations going into three generations of McDonald's owners. Wealthy, they own the business. Folks, if anything we got to learn coming out of this pandemic, out of this crisis, is that we prepare now, get a business plan, start thinking about your business. What is it going to be? Think your business. Look, Amen. I want, I wanted, I, I told you, my mind is on this. Uh, we got, our time is up, but I got to, I got to tell you what, last thing that was on my heart to share with you. Hold on, Brother Bedford. Do we have any questions? Do okay. we have any questions? Yes. Hold on, that final thought, Willie. Okay, fine. Do you have any questions for Willie? Is there a question, uh, Brother Beffer, you want to ask Willie? Well, the only thing, well, no, I, I think Dr. Jolly has covered so much in terms of just, I mean, that's a lot to unpack. So the only thing that I would encourage or ask Dr. Jolly to do is to give a central location where all of our uh, listeners and viewers can go and gain more access to you. And before you say that, the only other thing I want to say, George, before I turn it back over to you is just to make sure that everybody mark their calendar for this Saturday. We have Dr. Ken Harris coming up to kind of follow up and talk about some more. As Dr. Jolly is talking about starting your business, now we have Dr. Ken Harris is going to come on and give us some more insight about how to really develop and grow your business. So thank you for that, Dr. Jolly. So could you give us again? Yeah, uh, you know what? We... Uh... We know a lot of people here who are looking at and watching and viewing have lost their jobs, lost their businesses. Their businesses came to a screeching halt. So I, I, I created a page, my team and I created a page. It's called wjspeaks.com slash George. wjspeaks.com slash George. On that page, the first, there will be a number of options of things you can you can take advantage of. The first one is, the first option is to get an interview I did with me and Les Brown together called The Millionaire Mindset. It's powerful, incredible, and it's my gift to everybody. It's a $99 program that we sell online for $99, and I'm giving it to any and everybody because I know some people are struggling. On that same option, option number one, is a picture of me, George C. Frazier, Dr. George C. Frazier, Michael V. Roberts, and Randall Pinkett. I've had them all on my, my podcast. And so also when you get that download from Les Brown, you will get the download of the interview I did with George on my Sirius XM show that was one of the best of all time. My gift to everybody. Just go get that at wjspeaks.com slash
George. WKJ speaks that Comcast George. There are four more options on there. Option number two is say, you know what, I want to get some of your resources, but I don't have a lot of money. Well, we took my $126 digital package and just priced it at 49 bucks. Boom. Anybody want it? Download it, 49 bucks. But then some people say, I want your books. I like, I like hardcover books. I want all your books. I want it only takes a minute to change your life. I want a setback as a setup for a comeback. I want uh, only takes a minute. Uh, greenbacks, attitude of excellence, uh, love, make love, make money, make it last. So we got a book bag on that same page where you can go get all the books at a discount. There's a discount price. Go get them, and we'll send them. I'll sign them and send them to you. Uh, but then there are the ones who say, I want, I'm really going in. I'm serious about this. I'm going to build my thinking, my millionaire mindset. They get the Willie Jolly box. This is the Willie Jolly box. You go get the box. This is the, this, this is the real deal. This has got everything I've created, all my materials, all my programs, all my PBS specials, all my uh, music, everything. It's over $1,000. You get that for $4.99. And last but not least, I told you I'm doing personal coaching. I wasn't doing no coaching, George. You know I wasn't doing no coaching. But I'm doing coaching now. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm taking all the coaches and who want to pay. So anybody who goes to that site gets my regular coaching, uh, my hour, uh, half hour coaching program for half price. So look, if you, you can't afford anything, you get something of value absolutely free. If you can't afford something, we got different options. My main thing is go to wjspeaks.com slash George and just get something to bless you and your family, keep you safe during this time, okay? Uh, can I give you a closing thought, George, before you talk Absolutely. about the P &P Absolutely. P &P P &P P &P give us a closing First of all, uh, George and I had a long talk about the conference. We've talked about that a couple of times. I want to encourage people to register and then be open to the new world that might come as a result of the coronavirus. Nobody knows. This virus is making the rules. It decides, okay? So, be a part of George. Clune into George. Stay close to George. George is the most brilliant networking genius I've ever met. By far. The most brilliant, greatest friend will stand by you. He'll endorse you when you, nobody knows who you are. And he'll stand by you through the tough time. So that said, my last closing thought was my doctorate is a doctorate of ministry and faith-driven achievement. It was hard to go back to school in my 50s, but I did it. And now I see the power of the digging deep in everything I think or talk about. I don't want to get surface success. So in the Bible, there's a, a quote I love. It says, beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Now, when I unpack that, I realize you got to start at the end of that verse to understand the power of it. The soul prospering is number one, because it says, even as your soul prospers, that you focus on that first. Seek ye first the kingdom and all things will be added unto you. So even as your soul prospers, number one. Then you go to the next step back. As your soul prospers, I hope you have good health. I pray you have good health. And as you are so prosperous and you have good health, I pray you may prosper and be wealthy and leave a legacy for your children's children's children. The word prosper means increasing abundance continuously. To continuously increase your abundance. That's my prayer. Beloved, I pray that you above all things, you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. I love y'all. I'm grateful for you. I am honored to be able to call George Frazier my friend. And I want y'all to know for sure, without a doubt in my mind, your best is still yet to come. God bless you. Amen. Powerful closing thoughts. Powerful closing thoughts. Yes, um, Willie Jolly has been an esteemed guest. 
at the Power Networking Conference and speaker at our conference. Uh, it was Willie Jolly who recommended that Peggy Morris go to the Power Networking Conference. Out of that conference came sis the Sisters for Sisters Network, 500 bad sisters in the greater DC area, Prince George's County. So it's a place where you can connect, grow, and prosper. There's just no question about it. We're in our 19th year. Forbes magazine named us one of the top five conferences in America, not to be missed, not one of the top five, top five black conferences, but one of the top five of all conferences put on in this country. So again, a place to go to connect, grow, and prosper. You will meet some outstanding brothers and sisters. You will learn, you will earn, and you will return because that's our motto. We got, enough of, uh, we got a lot of us learning and a lot of us earning, but not enough of us returning. So we teach you how to learn, we teach you how to earn, and we also teach you how to reach down and to lift up and to reach back and pull forward. We call that returning. As you know, at the end of these podcasts, um, we do a special offer for only five people. So here's the offer again. Um, for those of you that um, are not familiar with it, let me just say it quickly. Uh, an adult registration at our conference is $1,500 for four days. If you met one person that could help change the trajectory of your life, would that be worth $1,500? The answer to that would be held to the yes. It would be worth it. You're going to meet more than one. We want our young people to come, 17 to 25 years old, students. A student registration is $800. So together, one student, one adult, is $2,300. We're going to make that package available to you, the five lucky people, the first five people, for $399. That's a $1,900 discount. You, an adult, and a young person, 17 to 25. There's only one way to get it. Now, you can learn all about the conference. Go to www.powernetworkingconference.com. Learn all you want to know. And then if you do it in a timely way, email me at gfraser at frasernet.com. That's gfraser at, fra at frasernet.com. Put in the subject, I'm in. Then in the body, put your name and your cell number. Your name and your cell number. The first five people, all uh, emails are timestamped. Get the special package reduced from $2,300 to $399 that allows you as an adult to bring a young person 17 to 25, first five people only. So that's our offer. We will see you on Saturday when the esteemed Dr. Ken Harris, the CEO of, um, oh my goodness. I, I just National happened. Business League. <laughs> the <laughs> National Business League. The National, I drew a blank. I'm old. Uh, I drew a blank. The National Business League, founded by Booker T. Washington. I got ahead of myself. Founded by the great Booker T. Washington and my good brother. We are at a strategic partnership together with the National Business League, are working together. And uh, he's got a lot to say. He will add, he will, he will, um, um, add some additional value around the entrepreneurial piece that Dr. Willie Jolly talked about. Uh, he is an entrepreneur himself, par excellence. Um, Brother Bedford, thank you. I appreciate you. Love you, man. All right. Um, you, you always got our back. You do a great job in, in, in making sure all the, the whistles and bells are working and the buttons are, are being pushed and the cues of being made and and you keep the whole thing together so you're the glue we love you for that willie jolly george i love you man love you keep doing god's word please tell d i uh, love her and tell her i of course i said hello and I will. tonight remember our goal as black people i said it earlier is to learn to earn and return a lot of us learning a lot of us earning, but not enough of us returning. Love you. See you Saturday night. God bless you. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Good night.